Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fatback Four Daily. It is uh, what day is it? Thursday. Thursday, the eighth, eighth of August. I'm brutal with dates. I'm brutal with days. And <laughs> um, I'm Gab, your host. Uh, Peter is here beside me. We're going to have a little chat for twenty minutes or so. This will not be a live broadcast because we're having technical issues. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be a twenty minute chat with me and Peter. I'll upload it to YouTube. I'll try upload it to Periscope, and we'll go from there. Um, and I'll try sort it for tomorrow. We are in Liverpool. We are in Motel Bar. Um, thanks to Paul Senior who's let us come in and use this um facility today. Um, but Peter, look, it's um, it's it's around five hours. Am I right? Four hours to go until the until the transfer window closes, and um. It doesn't look like Liverpool are going to do any business, and all I want to know is, if come five o'clock comes and we don't do any business, do you still walk into Anfield tomorrow night, uh, you know, eight o'clock against Norwich and think, yeah, we've a squad good enough to challenge anyone this season? Most definitely, yeah. This uh, this squad is basically, um, apart from Simon Minnelli and Alberto Moreno, who've left, is is the squad that that took us to the Champions League final. This is this is a squad that. Beat Barcelona 4 0 at Anfield, coming down from a 3 0 deficit. So, no doubt about the squad. Um, and the first 11 is is good enough to, to beat any team in the in the Premier League. So, I'm still still happy with, with what we've got. Although, admittedly, I would have loved us to have brought in at least one, maybe two players just to have freshened the squad up and added a little bit of depth, quality depth into the squad where. We could need later on in the season, and um, but yeah, I'd be. Although I'm, I, w- I won't be going to the game myself tomorrow, um, as I, I'm un- unavailable. But I'll be watching the game from afar, and I'll be I'll be still as happy with the the starting eleven as I would be um, come the end of of last season. Yeah, look, uh, you know, I always said from the start of the year, you you you. you, you I suppose your strength and from a position of strength as European champions you're looking to go out there and you know throw your weight around a little bit in the transfer market but Jurgen Klopp obviously if, if this has come down to it and make no bones about it this isn't a, a there's no draw on the line in the sand and, and saying you know you're on this side and I'm on that side and you know uh, the people that want to recruit want one thing and, and the money people at the club want another they're all in this together and it was proven last year and it has been proven for a couple of years so anyone going down that road I think it's a little bit naive Jurgen Klopp clearly thinks that this squad is good enough. He clearly thinks that Gomez with a full season, if he can get it out of him, is great. Oxley chamberlain the same. Kate into a second season. He's hoping to keep Lalana fit. He has Brewster coming in that he feels will do more than Sturridge did. He probably feels overall that this squad is as strong, if not stronger, than last season. Well, yeah, when you, you take into the account that Oxley chamberlain missed um, a good 12 months of football and Rian Brewster was also spent a lot of time out injured last season. Um, when you've got them two players coming back into a to a squad that was already um there from last season then yeah you've you've got basically two new two new players, haven't you? Oxley Chamber only played for what? Um eight months or something like that before he got his injury. Yeah, and came back for a handful of games last season but it was cameo appearances, there was nothing more than that. Exactly. So basically Oxley Chamberlain is is like a new addition to the squad. I know a lot of people say um, and disagree that Adam Lallana is a is a new like a new signing, and I'm probably one of them people who, who would disagree. He's been at the club for for a long time now, so he's he's not like a new signing. He, he does spend a lot of his time injured, but on the the point of of Brewster and, and Oxley Chamberlain, it's uh, it's most definitely like two two players have been added to the squad with with them too. So. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that the two of them can stay fit and healthy this season and um, and go on and do some big things for us. You know, so I may look a bit um, a bit you know distracted as this goes on. I'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm being honest. I'm trying to keep an eye on um, I'm trying to keep an eye on the phone as we go along with regards to any news and um, with regards to um, with, uh, with with regards to transfers. James Pierce says Klopp uh, says no answer when asked if he has a chance to bring Coutinho back. Asked about potential new signings today, not likely. So if you have something else to go, go and do it. Um, that's it. I think the club has put the nail in the, in the transfer um, stuff today. He's basically saying that uh, new signings are not likely, and if you have something else to do, go and do it. So Vinny O'Connor is now free to go and get onto that um, airplane, yeah. airplane, head off to Forge Ventura for a week. Right. It's safe in the knowledge that um, Melwood will be shut down early today, and 
and nothing will be happening transfer wise. But you know, you see all these names being mentioned. Do all do any of these do any of these teams worry you with the supposed incomings? You know, I think United are a bit of a mess on what they're trying to do. Now they could pull something out of the hat in the next three to four hours. Spurs are linked, being linked with every player going. Arsenal have got Luis and um, Tierney off Celtic. Uh, Chelsea have lost Luis, obviously, and can't sign anybody. City have brought in the fullback Consuelo, um, a right back. Um, but do you really look at anyone around us and think, oh, they've made massive strides to, to put pressure under at us at City? Because I don't think so. No, I think the the main team that's done the best business for me would probably be Tottenham because they've brought in um, Ndombele, haven't they, from Lyon. They're, they're in talks with, with Sessegnon from uh, Fulham. Dabal is being linked with them. Um, and also Bruno Fernandes is another one. But the players that they've, they've brought in to add to their already um, good squad that they had there, it's it's probably Tottenham who've done the the best business for me. Um, Wolves are another team, although they won't be pushing for a for a top three place if you like top two place. They they're one that can put, definitely push for the top six if not the the top four with the with some of the signings that that they've made. I know we we spoke before about uh, Aston Villa have spent probably the most money out of any any team that's in the Premier League this season, spending nearly 100, 150 million pounds on. On new players, which is going to be like um, basically a new a new start eleven for them. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do, whether they, they hit the ground running or they're going to play like eleven strangers. And it's going to take them a good four or five months to get used to playing to each other. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Aston Villa, Everton. Dare I say it? Have made a couple of half decent signings by the looks of it. They bought in the boy Keane from, from Juventus, who comes with a, a very high profile. He's He's got a good record in, in games to goals ratio, hasn't he? Looks like they, they possibly could bring in Will Zahar and um, he signed uh, Gabamin, I think his name, from um, out in Germany. So, yeah, they, they've strengthened the, the squad a little bit, although they did lose uh, Adrissa Guy and, and Adamola Luckman. I think Everton will still be. Um, They'll probably be pushing for the top six. I can't see them breaking into the top six this season, but uh, they have made a couple of half decent signings who, who who could strengthen their their first eleven going into into the season. So yeah, I don't think there's anyone who's who's made um, a massive statement in the transfer window as to say that, that they're going to challenge City and Liverpool. I don't think there's anyone um, saying as well that we, we spoke for Arsenal have brought in a couple of um, good players, haven't they, with, with Pepe and. Caballos from um, out in Spain. Um, looks like they're bringing David Luiz in as well. Although for me that's not the the sign and that Arsenal need. It. They need a, a solid centre half. They don't need someone who who wants to bring the ball out to the fence and and, and do cross turns on the edge of his box. They need they need someone who's going to be an out and off defender. They don't need someone who, who's who's going to try and um, show balls around the pitch. So for me that the David Luiz one is a strange one, but. Other than that, they they've made a few um, decent signings. But as for challenging the top two, uh, I think uh, Liverpool and City are by far the two strongest teams in the uh, in the Premier League this year. Yeah, I agree with you. I think um, City have future proofed the the Fernandinho role, and I think they're probably future proofing the right future proving the right back role with regards to Kyle Walker and bringing in this guy from Juventus. Um, Kyle Walker's 29, pushing 30 now. I think so. There may be something where they look at him, maybe going in the centre half as cover, because he's done that a bit for England. Um, so they they haven't really looked to massively improve their squad. I think they're looking to 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 solidify their squad, I suppose, for for the next next couple of years, you know. Yeah. And, and that's fair enough. Liverpool are probably looking at the likes of Gomez, Chamberlain, as we said, coming back in to solidify their squad. Um, Everton are making, as you said, they made some decent signs, but they're throwing out bids for everyone everywhere. Mar- Marcus Rojo from oh, United, yeah, twenty five million. Is is a strange one, um, but look, we're we're going to keep this short and sweet. We're going to only do 10, 10, 12 minutes on this. And what we do is I'll upload this, and then throughout the day, if anything happens, I will be able to go live via the phone and and you know tell people what's going on. But yeah, the la- the last question I suppose you, Peter, um, I don't th- I don't think you believe we'll sign anybody by the end by this by this window. Does but it like does it affect your confidence at all for the season? 
No, like I say, uh, it would have been nice to have brought in at least one, two maybe uh, squad players to, to add that bit of quality in the depth. But from the, the start of 11, it's, it's as good as any other other team in the Premier League. You've, and plus the three or four that can come on from the bench, you've got like Shaqiri, um, Divock Origi, players like that, Chamberlain, who, who can come on and, and, and fit into the team um, as good as anyone who we, we possibly could have signed. So, yeah, it was interesting to see that we didn't sign anybody. But like like we we spoke about on a few podcasts earlier, who who was actually out there um, at the right price and um, with the right attitude, who could improve, who could improve on what we've already got. Not many. So exactly, it's 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 a, I think it's a case of Bob's gonna wait and see how this first half of the season goes. If he does need to act in January accordingly, I, I think he would do. But I think he's just waiting till next season when the players that he's he's wanting will be readily available for him um, in the summer of 2020. I think that's what he's. Uh, I think that's what his plan is. Myself, but we shall uh, wait and see. Absolutely. Um, so just a quick one on tomorrow. Confident mm-hmm. for tomorrow? Yeah, got to be confident. Having you going into the the first home game against um, Norwich Friday evening, crowd's going to be well and truly up for it. I think this is going to be a big mosaic, isn't it, for the six times Champions League on it, out on the cop. Crowd are going to be up for it. I think players are going to be up for it. Under the lights at Anfield, first game of the season, can't really ask for, for much no, more. No, you can't, can you? So, yeah. When, you, when, do you, when you've just put it to me like that, I'm thinking, yeah, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's, it's better than going to away to Sheffield United at yeah. 12 o'clock on a Saturday. Exactly. Yeah. I, I was, as I was coming into town today, I was just thinking about it. Obviously, I won't be good a game. I was just thinking, ah, how good it would it have would it be to actually be there tomorrow night to, in the first game against Norwich? You, you you're coming up against a team that's just been promoted from from the championship. So you're thinking that Liverpool could sh- score a bag full tomorrow night, and hopefully it will. So I just think yeah, yeah the atmosphere is going to be on point, and it's going to be uh, a game that's that's really I'm really looking forward to watching it myself. Good. Um, prediction. Um. I think we'll score at least three goals tomorrow night. I really do. I think okay. um, I'm going to go with a 3 0 victory for Liverpool tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm sticking with 4 1. Okay. Um, I said 4 1, and then I said 5 0, so uh, <laughs> uh, it's not a lack of confidence I have. Definitely not. No, this um, is back to Norwich, by the way, because they're going to come No, in I just, think, I just yeah, think a lot yeah. of teams are going to get battered by Liverpool this season. It's just the mm. way it is. Um, look, that's been, um, that's been the Fatback 4 Daily. We're sorry we couldn't get it out live. There was technical difficulties, which we will try to sort for tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we'd like to thank the sponsor, Paddy Power. Paddy Power is a betting app. Uh, go in there. You can get all your odds on football, all your other sports, and everything beyond that. Um, if you do gamble, gamble responsibly. If you don't gamble, disregard everything I've said. Disregard the whole lot. So do not be worrying about it. Um, I will upload this. This will be uploaded later um, for you to watch. And as I said, any breaking news, We'll, I will go through the phone today on Periscope and we, we'll, uh, we'll give that a go as we go along and try to sort these difficulties out for tomorrow. It's the first time I've ever brought the laptop abroad. It's the first time the laptop's been on a plane. It's a little bit nervous. So don't worry about it. Um, but look, that's been us. That's been the Fatback 480. I've been Gav. That's been Peter. He's out on his holidays. I'm going for a point. Um, well, when I say point, I mean lots of points. And um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Over now.